You're at The Coaching Inn, 3D Coaching's virtual pub, where we enjoy conversations with people who are engaged in the world of coaching. Welcome to The Coaching Inn. I'm your host, Claire Pedrick. Thank you for coming. Uh, To keep updated on new episodes, do subscribe or follow on the platform where you listen to your podcasts, or indeed on YouTube, where you can also see this on video. So today our guest is Mark Mercer. Mark Hello. is, thank you for coming, Mark. Mark is, is Mark. Mark has so many amazing good ideas and emails me go, Claire, da, 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 da. It's fantastic. So, um, and it's absolute delight to have you on the coaching in, Mark. Thank you. Uh, tell us a bit about your journey with coaching and then we'll talk about what we're going to talk about. Okay, well, I guess uh, it it sort of started about 35 years ago. I think I've heard you say about 35 years ago, something like that. But anyway, a long time ago. uh, And I guess it was my own sort of fascination with how do I get better at sports or all kinds of stuff like that. And I discovered, you know, the inner game. Uh, Oh. uh, Yeah. So, uh, and I still, to this day, I think that's just an extraordinary uh, piece of work. and, it, and I guess it inspired me to go into the world of uh, psychology, sports psychology. I, I used it with coaching uh, sports. Uh, and so I kind of, I guess, formally did the world of coaching through the world of sports psychology originally. And uh, was luckily enough to work with a company called Sporting Body Mind. I don't get mentioned very much, but I think they are definitely sort of were definitely founders in that in that space however these things really emerge i don't know um Mm. but yeah and they were and they're very much uh humanistic approach so i guess my stance is coming from from that place you know uh believing in the possibilities of, of people and uh mostly throughout my year uh most of years i've worked as a um you know, external facilitator, coach, trainer, uh, mostly in the space of leadership development. I did spend some time working directly as a sports psychologist as well. Uh, And I guess uh, in more recent years, transitioned to to the world of working internally. Uh, So that's like the last five or or six years. Um, And yeah. Is that enough for now? Yeah, because the more will <laughs> come out. I didn't know you were a sports psychologist. Get, so very I, interesting. Met, uh, well, there you go. And I guess I'm, 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 I met you obviously through uh, this, your book, uh, yeah. and uh, and, uh, and 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 trained with you. And I've done I've done quite a number of trainings over the year, whether it be you know various ICF trainings or whether it be stuff on the drama triangle or the latest 360 or e in, emotional intelligence stuff so i guess i've kind of experienced lots of bits and bobs i guess i do have a i do have a love of learning i suppose that's my if i was to say what's my what's my kind of the piece of me that that, that brings the most value to the world it's probably my love of love of learning and um, and, and what i can bring bring to people in relation to that how interesting and it was you, wasn't it, Mark, who contacted me and said you need to talk to the physical intelligence people because there's some real connections yes, absolutely. between what we do yeah. in transforming conversations and what they do in the physical intelligence training. So that's kind of the opener for our conversation. Okay, great. And Good. There could be so I'm many really... openings, but... <laughs> well, yeah, but you gave another opening that I'd like to... <laughs> just Can we just go with another opening yeah, as well? Yeah, that's You've been in this business a long time. And we've probably been in different uh, different zones of the same kind of world. And I'm just really interested to know, Mark, what have you noticed that's new over time? Mm. And what have you noticed that keeps come, coming around and people think it's new and it isn't? <laughs> Uh, right. So, 
What's new? Well, I guess what's new is 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 relative to your own experience of it, right? I suppose. Yeah. Um. But yeah, what's new? I think there's more. I think there's more clarity around the space of of coaching despite the multitude of thousands of different types of coaching that exist out there so in some respects i think there is a little bit more clarity uh i think was i think what's this i think what okay obviously what was new is 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 you know the coaching standards and all that kind of stuff that didn't exist when i started and we would just be experimenting with all the different fields and trying stuff out and all that kind of stuff um so i guess that's that's new and i guess i sometimes do feel that although we have got professional standards somehow i don't feel it really speaks to what what coaching is i don't i'm not and i don't know where and that's the always the dilemma with coaching <laughs> Is I'm not, it's so hard to speak to what it is and what it's all about. So I think it loses its sort of, somehow you can't, its essence can easily get lost. Um, yeah, so I suppose that's, yeah. Um, yeah. What hasn't changed? What hasn't changed is it's about people in a room with relationships, um, having having a conversation. And I, th I do think, I do think we know a little bit more about ways to have that conversation that are useful than we did in the past and i think we're being braver around being a little not doing something because it would be good in an organization be doing something because it because it's the right thing to do and it's the it's the thing that will make the difference in coaching so i think we got a little bit caught up in what's the language that will work in a corporation rather than what's what's really great coaching about Oh, interesting. As you were talking about getting caught up in standards, <laughs> I was thinking about some work that I did this week um, to develop some coaches and was reminded again how standards can turn people into a kind of formula. Yeah. And what was really interesting was that I did this demo and we had a really long conversation about it. And when I offered back one or two words in service of moving the conversation forward, what they heard was, oh, so you were summarizing. And I, and I was thinking, I wasn't, I wasn't summarizing. Actually, that's the one thing I wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. but, but what I've noticed is it's become... That, that at some point in the teaching process, there's a risk that it can become very formulaic. And mm. if and if that's communicated as formulaic by the teacher or the book or whatever, and then it's received as formulaic, often we, when we're lacking in confidence, we make more rules, don't we? Mm. And then it becomes even more formulaic. Yeah. And that yeah. and that that amazing thing of what happens in the room that you're talking about just gets a bit squashed. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if I, I can make a physical in, intelligence link in this, one of the one of the the sort of they had it into four modules, and one of the modules was called were called Be Free, and you do a lot and you do a lot of movement practices associated where off, often with the left and the right side of the brain, and and talking about the importance of movement and walking, and which I know you talk lots about, but it does. I just I kind of sat with that word be free and I thought you know to what extent do I feel free when I'm when I'm coaching even mm -hmm. to the point of you know for example we'll easily say to ourselves well coaching is about asking rather than telling and if I've got that kind of heuristic in my head immediately well then it means I can't tell but sometimes it's useful to tell or you know <laughs> sometimes it's useful to make statements sometimes it's useful to offer in 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 in, in the language that you use so I kind of, I get, I guess I kind of, I, I guess I love the journeys that courses take me on. So I kind of exploring be free and then, you know, it kind of got into sort of thinking a little bit about, so what are the less directive and the more directive voices in coaching? 
because there are some directive voices and it's sometimes useful to use those. Um, so, so there's something about making sure that we don't get caught in it's just about this. It's never just about that. That's a part of it. And that's, yeah, it is a technology that's a lot about asking, but it's not just about asking, for example. I agree. And I think, I think the don't tell is so big it turns into don't offer yeah <laughs> don't say what you've just seen yeah and you know there are different kinds of telling aren't there because there's the i brought this into the room and i want to tell everybody that because it because i do because i am a teller mm, it's that mm. kind of don't tell isn't it yeah but sometimes yeah. you know when there's an information gap we have to make an offer because mm. otherwise we're yeah, Sarah Short, who runs the coaching revolution, she just says you can't coach across an information gap. And I think there's a question about how do you, even if there's information that needs to come to the room, how do you offer that without mm. it turning into advice? <laughs> so there's something actually that's more about don't advise. Yeah. Yeah. But you can, you know, sometimes there's a gap you offer, but mm. I often, when I'm mentoring coaches and listening to recordings with them, I go, what did you see? And they go this. And I said, you didn't say. And they said, yeah, that would be telling. And I'm going, no, that would be offering back what they just did, said, brought into the space. And that's data, and we need to be using that. So be free. I love that. <laughs> so tell, yeah. tell me, tell us some of the connections, Mark, between what you, or the builds between what you learned in transforming conversations and what you learned from the physical intelligence training. Yeah, and I think there's another build as well, because I think I never, I, I sort of, sort of things, I think things happen for a little bit of a reason in terms of when you come across stuff. So I think your other book was also a little bit of a, a call to action and, yeah. uh, you know, around sort of way of being. Um, and, and I think a, a lot of, the physical intelligence space is a lot of a lot about a, a, a way of being. Um, so, um, so, so for example, if you you know preparing for a coaching session, what kind of state is it most useful to to be in to be prepared and ready for that coaching session? And I don't quite know whether to admit this, but 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 I, I would typically go for a walk before a coaching session. That's something that I would do. But I probably would inject a, a, a little bit of sugar into my system to get myself <laughs> into the right kind of state. Uh, and it's just so it's 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 those, what what are what are your routines before coaching that enable to you, you to be in the best best state so you can serve serve, serve the other and. So, so whether that mean doing some movement practices, whether that mean really tuning into your breath, whether that mean tuning into your body, um, uh, you know, doing a, you know, really noticing your sensations. So tuning into yourself so that you can tune into others. So I guess, it, you know, that, that was a big thing. Um, so in terms of in terms of connections, I guess the most obvious one is change the medium, right? So in in terms of change the medium, so you would Claire, you often talk about move, and I guess it's talking about offering other types of movement that might also be useful if I need to if if, if I need to shift my state or we need to shift state in a me, in, in, in a meeting, could we do a little bit a little bit of a twist or could we stretch a little bit or go a bit bigger or whatever it might be? that enables us to access the kind of state that allow, will allow us to move forward in that, in that conversation. So that would be a, a, an easy example. Um, I guess I've talked about presence and the kind of presence that you bring uh, at the beginning of that conversation. I, I suppose it invites what kind of questions do you ask? So in terms of, you know, you, you, know, you might be interested in, um, you know, what's you, what's somebody thinking about? What's on somebody's mind versus what's happening in your body? What are you noticing in your body, and paying attention to that, and what information that can, that can bring? Um, yeah, so it's a lot about a, a lot of it was about your inner sort of 
presence and having that sort of inner strength to be in the right place for the coaching. And then I think it's really about it's really about exploring the ways that you can use the amazing technology of body, the movement, breath, posture, uh, in service of whatever that whatever might be brought up in the conversation, I guess. Because as we discussed on another podcast in the last week or so, we're not brains on sticks. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And I guess I think, I think, you know, I'm sort of 55 ish or whatever. And that, you know, in terms of personal impact, I think, you know, we, we sort of had a little exploration. What's the story of your body? And I kind of noticed that I was kind of in a little bit of a almost victim role in terms of things that are slightly getting a little bit creaky and realizing I, I don't really believe in that I, really, I I do have some agency and so realizing I can be in a better state you know I can do things consciously to be in a state to have agency so that I'm better of service of myself my others my family um you know and I think just that feeling I think there was a, a feeling of a massive empowerment through the course oh. that that we can, you can change things, you know, and I think we have a very sort of head first model in the world. And I think actually, I think a lot of things happen through our state. You know, if I think of sort of the, my model of how do we work as a human being, you know, sensations and state would be very dominant for me now, as opposed to the stuff in your head. <laughs> Which is very ironic, given that you started out by saying that you have a deep love of learning and that felt really heady. And okay. now suddenly out, out we come. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess, body. I guess. Yeah, so I guess to give some context to that learning, I suppose if I think about, probably if I think make some connections to that, I, I, I don't know whether you remember the film Dead Poet Society and Seize the Day. Do you remember all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so when I was, one of the ways I would, I would, and I guess this is learning to coach, right? One of the ways I would, I would uh, improve my skiing on a daily basis because I did seasons would be, you know, notice that feeling in the stomach, noticing as, as I get to a steep core or whatever it might be. And going with the sensations, going with the feeling, and I guess I've been. A, I think I think learning takes adventure and exploration, and being able to go with those un, that uncomfortable affect, so that you can go down that mountain or you can do whatever it might be, rather than letting the feelings get in the way of the learning. So I suppose I've always tried to explore in a way that I'm seeing something different. I'm. I'm, I'm uh, and I always go back to things that I've had a feeling and 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 sort of oh no that's not right and I'll go back to it and get curious and somehow that somehow feels right again the original affect wasn't there but actually if I do it again it does make a bit more sense. You've does just any, does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, really. But you know when I said uh, what's new and what just comes around again. You've just described as a young person by the sound of it, when you were doing skiing and seasons and things, you've yeah, described, yeah. well, I mean, it would be given labels now, somatic embodied, whatever learning, <laughs> but you talked about the fact that you learned to, you learned, you learned to learn about skiing through seeing what your body was doing, feeling, thinking. Yeah. 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 So I, I love yeah. that that learning thing started in your body before it went into your head. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, certainly the bits that were exhilarating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what does this integrated learning look like in the room, Mark? What does it look like in the room? Well, I think... So I think we are working with the questions that get it, that the thinker brings to the room. But I do also think we're working with the questions that of our our maps or our ways of seeing the world and i think there are we have world views and different ways of looking at things and from that we'll naturally ask ask questions or we'll notice things or we'll see things or we'll offer so i think the fact that the body 
matters and is important means I'm more likely to to talk about that. Um, talk about you know. So what are you noticing about your body mind state uh, rather than rather than you know what you're thinking about? Um, yeah. So it's probably not very complicated. You know, that's the, that's the weird thing about all these things. You learn all these things, and it's probably not that complicated. And it's a lot of subtle things that change. Um, I think, I think, I think it's sort of, I think the other thing that changed was the importance of, you know, we talk about insight, but I do think we need to convert insight into experiments, into exploration. Huh. Um, uh, and I think I probably had a little bit more of a map of insight as in, oh, I've got a new way of seeing things, which I love. Right. And, and I think it's helped me co convert a little bit from, I've got a new way of seeing stuff. And so what does that mean in terms of how I'm going to go out there, experiment, innovate and learn? And I think so it's that that I think is a. Is different because I think it's I am guilty of in my own as a as a thinker of. Oh, I've, I've got an insight that'll do. That's brilliant. <laughs> Rather than where do I where do I take this now? Where does it where does yeah. it travel to? And I suppose it's I've done a lot of. I've done a lot of natural experimentation through the physical intelligence in the same, t same way I did with 3D, but there's some, this, again, it was just a different quality about it, a different, different essence about it. Um, that means I'm, I'm stacking on habits. You know, what do you do? What, how do you spend the first 15 minutes of your day? Um, what do you spend the last hour of your day? Um, uh, what are you doing throughout the day? to tune into yourself. Um, yeah. What are you doing to recover? Mm. Um, and I guess so if we, again, if you think about your day as a coach, you know, days I've done lots of coaching in a day, I mean, they're absolutely exhausting. So how do I, how do I connect with myself? How do I recover appropriately, whether that be breathing or movement or posture, um, whatever it might be, to really get myself into the right state. And I guess I have a bit of a map thinking about that a little bit more of like, I think we're often in a little bit of an orange state as when I'm saying that orange, you know, we're, we're often a little bit more stressed out than we, than we realize. And I think mm. we can do proactive things to get ourselves into a more, um, relaxed generative state and more of a, a more ease and flow rather than stress and strain. So it's inviting me, a, a, a constant question: How do I how do I get more ease and flow into my day, into my coaching, into whatever I'm doing? And I'm guessing that by orange, you're talking about traffic light colours, are you? Kind of traffic, yeah, as in like kind of state, as in rather than a okay. green state, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be in a red state. Obviously, we know that, but sometimes I think we're often in kind of yeah that middle state. And I think there is another state we can be in if we're proactive. That's more optimal. You know, the, the, uh, and I think we so easily will get used to orange, but there are, that, but there is another way. There are ways of kind of having a good day and being, feeling well during that day rather than just pushing through. So I'd like to ask a question to the sports psychologist, bit of you. <laughs> and my question is, if you were coaching sports people and they were on the pitch, in the what do it they were doing the professional sport for six hours a day back to back mm. what would you say to them well i think yeah i i i'm you know i'm i don't i'm not there day to day with how they do things now and the, when i was in professional sport i guess that was <sighs> I guess a good 25 years ago or something but, but so I'm I'm going to guess that they they that the world of sport is much better about the world of recovery you know oh. you hear, you hear, I I'm I'm going to sense that they know the importance of being on being off the importance of the other side of if I really push myself I do need to to recover uh, I guess there are demands that are put on them and I guess uh, thinking about what they do with their own energy around that and their own awareness, they might not recover. But in terms of physically, I would hope they're in a context and environment 
where that where that is provided and, and that and that does happen. Um, I think I, I think also just I think recovery is a is a work in progress for me. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I I can find myself uh, not not being comfortable being in kind of retreat mode. Uh, mm. So I think learning to retreat is, is some people have that more of that gift than I do, and I'd like to learn that a little bit more. <laughs> It's just when you're talking about back to back, yeah. you know, I've always held the conversation, the question, which is what's full for a coach? What's full in mm. a day? What's full in a week? What's full in a month? Mm -hmm. But the way you talked about it in terms of physical recovery made me really think how honest do we need to be with ourselves to really make sure that we're not in the red zone? in your red traffic light system accidentally too much yes i think it's i think that's incredibly easy and i think unless you're paying attention there'll be signals there and unless we pay attention to that tension and notice it unless we work with it and realize we can do something with it uh unless we check into ourselves we do you know i notice just notice the feeling of my feet on the floor notice my breath notice my heartbeat unless i do that i will carry on and and get home and collapse <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you <know>? exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah when when we went in our camper van in june i read 15 novels and i just posted it on face on linkedin and a load of people said it's that your th this isn't true for everyone but for them and actually for me reading novels is a really good mental health check-in because if you can't read novels and you normally can then it's saying something about your capacity to to, to escape to retreat to whatever mm, 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 and i've mm. used it as a since then it's been a really brilliant testing thing if I go for more than a day or two days without reading a novel, you know, obviously if, if we're out with friends, you know, there's, there are, there are reasons that sometimes you can't read a novel, but if I'm in and I can't face a novel, I'm using that as a, as a calibration really mm. about how I am. And that's been really, really useful. I know it's slowed me down. Yeah. And if, if I'm, you were going to say something. I was going to say, so there are all different kinds of ways of checking whether you're, whether you're in the, the slightly risky zone. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I was just going to build on your, your, um, uh, you know, that I, sometimes I'll read, I'll read a book, I'll read a page and I realize I've just read that over like four times, that one page, because <laughs> yeah. I literally can't manage to concentrate on it. Yeah. Something's yeah. not right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. I think. I think. Yeah. And I think it's. It is. Lit, checking in with. Yeah. Sensations. How I'm feeling. Mood. All that. And 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 actually responding to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doing something with that rather than. Uh, and I, I. You know. Talking of a book I read. One of the books I read. Uh, called Better in Every Sense which links to noticing was just the, the mm. massive importance of tuning into our sensations oh. and, and how when we tune into our sensations and go sense foraging, um, then, then uh, we, we use a different part of our brain. You know, we, so when you go for those walks and you look at nature and you notice what you're seeing and, and you know, all that stuff, uh, uh, we're, we are inviting another part of our brain, I think it's called perceptual inferences rather than conceptual inferences, our brain predicting from all our concepts. It's actually getting new information, new noticing that allows us to to refresh ourselves, literally refresh our concepts, refresh our way of seeing the world. Does that make, it, that, does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, and I love I the word sensation. <laughs> sensation. I, <laughs> I love the word sensation because sometimes people... I had somebody say to me this week, actually, and she said, 
some people can really feel in coaching when I, when they're the coach. And she said, I don't really. And I said, but what do you see and hear and notice and sense? Because it feels like feeling is in me, whereas sensing is could be in the mood, in the whatever. So that's very interesting. Um, better in every sense. I'll put the link in the show notes. Thank you okay. for the recommendation. <laughs> Because it feels like that might be a really releasing thing for people who, you know, that thing that goes, uh, body is instrument, which I hate as a word. Because what does it mean? Am I a cello? <laughs> Am I a trumpet? <laughs> but actually paying attention to what's going on is, a, is what it means, isn't it? Yeah, um, absolutely. And that might be a useful, a useful take. I'll, I'll see if we can, if it's recent, I'll see if we can get the author to come. To it is recent. It. it is recent. Yeah. And, and I think. I think um what was I gonna say? Uh there's something around the oh, I've lost what I was gonna say. Oh that happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Welcome to the world of half the coaches in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> and the art of course is what do we do with that is <laughs> If you remember it, ping me a message and we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> Mark, well, an absolute pleasure to have you here at the Coaching Inn and to be able to talk to you and to hear some of your stories and connections and all these good things. If people want to, I'll put the physical intelligence Thank link you. in the show notes. Um, how do people contact you if they want to have a conversation with you? Oh, just LinkedIn. Just Mark Mercer okay. on LinkedIn. Yeah. Marvellous. So thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you. Uh, would love to hear your build on this. So do put comments uh, wherever you're listening to your podcast because it would be lovely to turn this into a conversation. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we'd love you to share the podcast with a friend or leave a comment on social media. And if you'd like to become a regular at The Coaching Inn, you can subscribe on Podbean and all major podcast channels. We look forward to welcoming you next time. You've been listening to The Coaching In, 3D Coaching's virtual hub. For more information, check out 3dcoaching.com.